Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com and today we have a new Illustrator tutorial for you. We're gonna take a look at creating this super cool like faux 3D hexagon style background. The best way to check it out is just take a look at it. Ugh. Yeah, it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? We're gonna create that from scratch. There's nothing you need but a copy of Illustrator and your own two eyes to watch this video. Now, if you do enjoy this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can check out all the other Illustrator tutorials, past, present, and future. And uh, if you really enjoy the tutorial, well, consider supporting the channel by picking up a copy of my Photoshop course. It's all about how to retouch images. I know we're a bunch of graphic designers here, but it's probably the best way to support the channel. A link for the course appeared uh, up there in the corner. There's also a link in the bio, you know, if you're interested. If not, the video is free. Uh, and well, we're gonna get started right now. All right, so here in Adobe Illustrator, we're going to go File, New, and we're going to create a brand new document. I'm going to roll with 2560 by 1440. If you're following along, we are going to be doing some stuff that's like exact to the pixel dimension, so it might be a, the best idea to follow along at the size, and then once you have it down pat, create your own document at your own size. All right, so here we are. I'm going to double click here to open up my layers panel, and I'm actually going to make my layers a little bit bigger so they're a little easier to see. I'm going to go with like 75 pixel or something just to blow them up a little bit. Now I'm going to grab the polygon tool, which is located here underneath the rectangle tool, and I'm going to click a single time, and I want the radius of my polygon here to be 128 pixels, and I want it to have six sides. So I'm going to hit OK, and you can see here we have our polygon. Now I'm going to grab my uh, black arrow, my selection tool here, hold down shift, and I'm going to rotate the polygon so the pointed side is on the top and the bottom. All right, I can just click and drag this anywhere. I'm going to zoom in on it a little so we can really see what's going on here. Let's just get rid of the stroke here by selecting the stroke over here in our toolbar and hitting the none option there. And the fill, the fill can really be anything. We're going to change it. I'm going to go with red just so it's very easy here for everybody to see it and follow along with exactly what I'm doing. Now we want to select this shape, well we have it selected, and we want to copy it. So we're going to go edit copy, and then we're going to choose to paste it in front, which is essentially going to paste it in place. If I open up my layers panel here, you're going to see I've got two polygons. Now the topmost polygon here, I'm going to change the H value or the height value up here in the top control panel here with the selection tool. I'm going to change this to 164, 164 pixels. Now I do have the little chain link here clicked on before I make this change, so the width will scale accordingly, and I'll just commit that, and you can see it gives me a nice little polygon kind of in the middle. If you need to, you can select both shapes and just align them to the center. I don't need to do that here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select both shapes. Maybe we'll just swap the fill and the stroke just so that it makes this, uh, this part of the tutorial a little bit easier to visualize. I'm going to select both these bits and I'm going to go view, guides, and choose to make guides. And you're going to see there we now have guides in the shapes of our polygons, right? Well, this might seem weird, but it's actually perfect for us because what we need to do next is come right over here. And we'll grab the pen tool. In fact, I'm going to swap my fill and stroke again. So I'm, I'm working with that red fill and we want to draw three shapes. So now you can see how this is going to be very easy for me to draw these shapes because it's like Illustrator knows exactly where I want to draw. That's because under the view menu, I have smart guides turned on. Smart guides are going to be so super helpful for this step. So I'm going to hover over here. You can see it says anchor. That means I'm going to place my anchor point exactly on that anchor point of the guide. There we go. And then I'm going to come right down and place it on that point of the guide. And then we place it on this point of the guide. And then I'm going to place it on that anchor point of the guide. And then right out here. And then bing, right up there. And boom, we have our first shape. Great. Now I'm going to come right down here. I'm going to place one right there on that anchor point, right there on that anchor point, come out to that anchor point. Boom, anchor point, anchor point anchor point and whoop, I don't think I got the exact anchor point I want to be really careful and get it on every anchor point just to make sure that there's no there's no funny business going on all right we're going to begin here on this anchor point come down to this anchor point to this anchor point and to this anchor point the whoop, wrong one that anchor point and another anchor point and then finally close it off so what we've essentially done is we've used these guides to create these three pieces of shape that give us kind of that polygon thick border shape that we had. We can actually get rid of our guides. I'm just going to hide them. I'm going to shut them off for right now because we don't need them. We're going to begin adding gradients to each of our shapes right now. Let's just grab the top left shape, begin working on this first. Let's come over here, select the gradient panel, right? And uh, we'll, we'll double click on the gradient panel and double click again. And then I'm going to click on this gradient stripe, a uh, little thumbnail there, a little swatch. And it's giving me just a straight white to black gradient. All right, what I want to do here is I want to select the white point right down here. 
And then we'll come up here to the color panel. I'm going to hit that little flyout menu icon in the top right corner, and I'm going to choose RGB. And you can see here I can input a hex code. So I'm going to input D8, D8, D8. All right, so that's kind of my lighter gray. Then I'm going to select the black slider once more. We're going to go to RGB, and I'm going to input here CD, CD, CD. So you can see we've got kind of a light gray on the one side going to a dark gray on the other side. And just to make sure we get this gradient as we like it, we'll grab the gradient tool here. And I'm going to just select right here, and I'm going to pull a gradient straight back into that corner. Man, let me try flipping it the other way. Let's see. Now, I definitely, I think I want my highlight out on this side. So the lighter gray is out here. The darker gray is kind of up over here. That's great. All right, let's go ahead now and choose the top right shape. So grab the selection tool, select the top right straight uh, shape. We're going to just click on our gradient swatch here. It's going to fill it with about the same gradient, but that's not right. We do want to make some changes here. We're going to double click on the, or we'll just single click on the left color stop, excuse me, and we're going to punch in D1, 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 and then over here for the right hand color stop, we're going to go B8, 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 oh, that's the opacity. You just want to select the color swatch once, so I'm going to go force of habit here, I'm double clicking everything. There we go, B8, B8, B8. So we've got kind of a lighter going to a darker gray, and again, we could probably mess with this and maybe pull this more like this. Something like that. So we kind of have the dark gray relegated to this part of the shape, whereas the lighter gray kind of dominates the rest of it. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and select the shape on the bottom here. And this one, we're going to add the gradient, uh, but I think I'm going to switch it to a radial gradient here. So we'll just use this drop down menu and choose radial gradient. And then for the lighter gray here, we're going to go with something a, a bit lighter. So let's try like F1, F1, F1. It's essentially a white, but not quite. It's just a very, very light gray. And then for the darker, we're going to go with like DB, 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 something like that. So it's darker than the, the, you know, the very light gray, but still not as dark as the stuff on the sides. And then I'm going to take my gradient tool here once again, and I'll probably pull this kind of like that. I want there to be a reasonably large highlight kind of in the bottom middle. And if I deselect you, you're starting to see how we're giving our polygon some shape with these subtle gray gradients. And in fact, as I'm looking at it, I want to select this bottom shape. Let's try pulling this color stop over a bit just to make that highlight on the bottom a little bit more intense. You can see I'm dragging it over to so the location. Let's just call it 35%. We'll just say we're dropping that at about 35%. So we're really placing a hot spot in like the bottom center of our polygon. That looks pretty cool. All right, we're going to grab our pen tool and now we're going to draw some triangles in some of these corners to add a little bit of shadowing. So I'm going to click there to draw along the anchor. Click there. I'm going to come out this way. And then I'm going to draw back across to uh, create that shadow. Now we're going to fill this with black. So over here in the color panel, I'm just going to hit this little black swatch here. You can see, well, it's just set that color to black. So we need to come here to the bottom of the toolbar, and we need to actually select the solid color swatch down here. And you can see, there we go, fills our shape with solid color. Great. I can just take this now, and I can, well, number one, I can stretch it out a little bit, and then just nudge it upward a little. Just kind of something like that. That'll probably be perfect. And we will draw now another, uh, another little shadow in this corner. Let's go right along here, bada bing, there we go, got that, and we can mess, I'm probably actually going to just leave that exactly how it is, and then last but not least, we'll draw a shadow for this side of things here. So let's bring this, actually I'm going to bring this straight back across, we'll make the triangle this way. There we go. Now what I want to do, I want to select these three shapes. So select the first one, hold down shift and select each of the others. You can see it's selected all three of them now. And what we're going to do is we're going to group them together. So I'm going to go object group and now we're going to apply a Gaussian blur to them. So I'll go effect, blur, Gaussian blur, and let's give these a Gaussian blur of probably, I don't know, let's see what 35 pixels looks like. That might not quite be enough. Let's go like 55. Eh, it might be a little bit too much. Let's nudge this down to like, I don't know, between 45 and 50 will probably be good. Let's hit OK. And now we need to mask these shadows to our polygon. So let's select those three polygon shapes. So select one, hold down shift, select the other, shift, select the other. And we're going to copy them. So we're going to go edit. Uh, edit, there we go, copy. And now we will select our shadows group. It selects all three shadows because we've grouped them together. Now let's select the transparency panel here. And we'll double click on this little thumbnail, double click to add a mask. And now we're going to go edit paste in front, which is going to paste our polygon back in place. But we just want to fill each of these shapes with white. So let's first of all hit the solid color change right there in the bottom of our toolbar. And we can double click on the swatch and just set it to white so we fully reveal those shadows. And now we'll just click here on this thumbnail to return to like normal editing mode. And at this point, if we want, we can reduce the opacity of these shadows if we need. I think I'm going to leave them at full power, full strength for right now. We'll see later on if they need to be adjusted, but I kind of like the way they look right now.
Now next, we're gonna be duplicating this entire shape. So let's select everything here, the shadows and the three little shapes, and go object group to group these together. And we're gonna duplicate this group. This, by the way, also is gonna be very helpful if you turn on Smart Guides. It is gonna make this little thing that we're gonna do here so, so easy. Now in order to duplicate this, you wanna hold down your Alter Option key, and I'm gonna hold down my Shift key as well. And I'm gonna drag this upward so the edges of my shape kind of line up with the inner the inner uh, crotch or corner of the polygon, just like that. That's probably just about right. Now I'm gonna hold my Alter Option, drag out another copy of this and position it down here. You should pretty much feel it snap or click into place when it's about where it needs to be and then hold down Alter Option, drag out another copy and it should pretty well click into place over there. And you can see here we have this sort of three-pointed triangular shape of the, the, our polygon now. Well, now we have three additional instances of that polygon. But our goal is just to create kind of a, a shape here that's gonna appear in the middle of our polygon, so we really need to hide all this junk out here. So first and foremost, let's just select each of these groups. So I'm holding down shift and selecting each of them. And then we're gonna go object, object and choose to ungroup them because First and foremost, we can select all the shadows. We can just delete the shadows from those three outer polygons. But also we can just delete all these additional shapes out here. We don't need any of these shapes, right? So now we have this kind of funky slash cool looking 3D-esque bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select these three shapes, holding down shift and clicking all of them. And I'm gonna group these together. So we got with those selected, we'll go object group. And now we have these grouped together. You can see the shape right there in our layers panel, pretty cool. And if you find the need, you could select and adjust the gradient for any one of these shapes. I think I like the way it is. I think I'll just leave it how it is for now. We'll see if we need to adjust it later. But most importantly, let's grab our polygon tool again, click a single time, and this time create a polygon with a radius of 100. Hit OK. Once more, we're going to hold down Shift and rotate it so the points are up. And we're just going to bring this down and align it right to the middle of our shape. Having Smart Guides turned on allows it to just snap right into place. Let's fill this with the color white. So let's go ahead down here, bottom of the toolbar, solid color, and double click. And we're just going to fill it with solid white. And then we're going to cut this to our clipboard. So we're going to go Edit, Cut. And we're going to select that group of shapes. And we want to mask this. So double click here to, to create your layer mask. And we're going to go Object, paste in front, or I'm sorry, edit, paste in front. And you can see we'll have clipped our shape. Now it still looks pretty bad because it doesn't look like it's just seamlessly perfectly underneath our original polygon. But let's click this thumbnail to get back to normal editing. And at this point, all we have to do is drag this group behind our polygon. So just drag it down the layer stack, boom. And there we go. Now we have the center of our polygon shape just like that. Now, in order to complete the shadowiness of this, we're going to select this middle shape and we're going to add a double outer glow to it. So let's go effect, stylize, and choose outer glow. We're going to add our initial outer glow here. The mode is going to be normal. Color will be solid black. Uh, we're going to set the opacity here to 90%. It's going to be, whoops, we're going to set the opacity to 90%. Uh, the blur is only going to be about five pixels. We can preview this and you can see it's just a strong kind of stout little blur that we've got going on. We're going to hit OK. And by the way, you don't see outer glow all the way out here because if we shut off the this front polygon, you can see that we've trimmed it back and the mask is covering any of that stuff up. So let's turn our initial polygon back on. Let's go ahead and add a second outer glow. So we'll go effect and choose the outer glow option. And it's going to say, hey, would you like to apply a new effect? And yep, we do want to apply a new effect. Let's just preview this. And I think an opacity of 90% with a blur of five, I think this is going to be about perfect for us. So it's just going to be a very heavy, thick, strong outer glow. And you really need to double it up to get this kind of choked effect. Uh, so I'm going to hit OK. Now next up, we want to add a shadow for for the, uh, for the entire object here. So we want to add, basically our outer polygon should be casting a shadow on this inner bit. So we're going to select our original outer polygon here. We're going to copy it and paste it in place. We're going to go edit copy, edit paste in front. Uh, but once more, we need to open this group up. We're just going to select those corner shadows. We're going to delete them, get rid of them. And we can select here, select the entire group. And we're going to set the fill to just solid black. So you can see here we have a question mark because we have multiple gradients right now. Let's just hit the color option, convert it all to solid black. That's great. And let's set the H value, the height here of this group. We're going to reduce it from 256 to 215. I remember, again, we have the chain link checked on or turned on, so the width is going to move with the height. You can see we just have a much smaller version of that outer polygon shape. We're going to go effect here. We're going to blur this. So we're going to go blur. Gaussian blur, and we're going to blur this, I, I want to say like 30, 35 pixels, 47 is probably a bit too much. Let's go like 35, 35 I think will work for us, great. And we're also going to go effect artistic and choose film grain. 
And we're just going to throw like a 10, 10 grain. This is actually probably perfect. 10 grain, zero in the highlight area. We don't really need to worry about highlight area here. And then an intensity of 10 is perfect. We'll hit OK here. You can see it's applying that crazy looking grain. Uh, we're going to set this to the blend mode of multiply. And I'm just going to reduce the opacity to 50%. Now, obviously, it looks weird because it's on top of that front most uh, polygon. So we need to take the shadow, which is this. We can even name it shadow. In fact, I'll name it shadow one. And I'm going to drag it beneath the frontmost polygon. And now you can see we have this shadowy shape. So we can, if we turn this on or shut it off, shut it off. There it is. No shadow. There it is with a shadow. And we added that grain just, just for good measure. And I think actually looking at the shadow, I'm going to click here to select it. I'm going to nudge it to the left about five pixels. So I'm going to go like one, two, three, four, five, something like that. You may, maybe could take it even a little bit further in one or any of those directions just to make uh, the, the, cube looking a shape in the middle not quite we don't want it to quite look so perfect i'll put it to you that way that's what i'm trying to say that's what i'm trying to say so there we go that looks pretty good and i think finally we need to add one uh, we basically need to duplicate this center piece of beam looking artwork and duplicate it and place it behind all this to add our last layer of effect to this so i am going to select this center group right here in the layers panel there it is right there i'm going to duplicate it uh, by going edit to copy and then i'm going to choose edit paste in front here you can see it pasted it right there in front of the group. I think I'll drag it all the way up to the front just so we can really see what's about to go on here. First and foremost, we want to delete those outer glows. How do we do that? Well, we have this place here called the appearance panel. If we double click there, we can simply select each outer glow and drag it to the garbage can. So boom, boom, get rid of that. And I think also we want to get rid of the layer mask here. So up in the transparency panel, we can choose the release button, which is going to release the mask. Now it looks like we screwed all kinds of stuff up. We didn't. I'm going to collapse the appearance panel. We just have right here this polygon layer. That's the mask. That's the shape that was the mask. We don't need that anymore, so I'm going to select it and just delete it. And there is our group without an outer glow. Don't worry if the preview doesn't catch up in time here in the Illustrator Layers panel. It is it is what it is, what we see out here on our, our artboard. And next, we want, to, we want to just rotate the shape. So I'm going to go Object Transform and choose to rotate it. And specifically, 60 degrees is what works and gives us the exact shape that we want. You see, I'll just flip it exactly how we need it. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And we'll just drag this. We'll drag it until it's exactly aligned where it should be with all of our corners. And then we're going to go Object Transform and choose to scale this. And I think we'll scale it to like, uh, I don't know, 70%. We're using uniform scale here. Yeah, 70% is probably great. We'll hit OK. Now, the one thing we do need to do is we want our lines to really line up perfectly. You see how the center of our little triangulated shape here is not aligned with the center of the polygon shape, or, or not really shape, but the, the crevice or corner there. So we'll just hit the down arrow key, bing, and just line those up you know, pretty much as best as we can. And I will select this shape, or this group of shapes, really. You can see there it is. It's in front of everything currently. We'll go Object, Arrange, and just tell this, look, send, all, send yourself all the way to the back. So you can see we have that really deep in there. It really looks like two beams coming out of nowhere and just plugging themselves into the corners. Looks pretty cool. Now, we want to add an overall layer of grain to this because we already added that grain in the shadow. So let's go ahead and grab our original polygon here, and we'll duplicate it. We'll go Edit, Copy, and we'll just paste this guy right in front, paste in front. And I'm, once more, I'm going to open up the group. I'm going to select those shadows. I'm going to select them straight up and just delete them, get rid of them. And then I'm going to select the group here, which is going to select all three shapes. And we want to double click. We want to open up our Pathfinder panel. That's what we're looking for. It's up here under Window Pathfinder. It's a super helpful, one of my favorite places in Illustrator. We're going to choose this Unite option here. And that should join all of your shapes together. You see how now you just have one continuous, solid gray gradient filled uh, polygon shape. But what we really want to do is get rid of the hole that's being punched in the middle of it. So we can do that by grabbing our direct selection tool. And you can see the path here on the middle has these anchor points. So we can just select one of those anchor points. I just selected this one right here. And you can see the rest of the anchor points kind of activate, but they're not selected. Hit the delete key. It's going to delete that one anchor point. But most importantly, it's going to select the entire rest of the path. And you can delete it. And you just get the solid gray polygon, which is covering up all of our artwork at the moment. Now we need to fill this with a 50% gray. So let's come over here and choose to fill it with a solid color. Double click on the color swatch. Set our saturation here to 50. I'm sorry, you don't want the saturation to be 50%. You want the saturation to be zero. You want your brightness to be 50%. And there's a nice 50% gray. Hit OK. And once more, we'll go effect. We will go artistic and choose film grain. Now, in this case, I'm going to go with a grain. I'm not quite 10. Maybe I'll go like 5. And I don't need the intensity to be very high. So I'm going to just set that back to 0 as well. And I'm going to hit OK. And what we can do here is with this grain polygon selected, we can set it to the blend mode of soft light, which will drop away all of that 50% gray and just leave the grain. And I think I'll even reduce the opacity to like 50%. So there we go. We have this really cool little shape. Now, in order to create that full pattern that we saw earlier, you just want to select all the shapes you have. 
and we want to go object group to group them all together so they're easily duplicatable. We can select our polygons at this point, just drag them to the trash, those polygon guides, remember way back at the beginning of this thing. And once we have this shape, we can drag it wherever we want. You can see it, it kind of hangs out, sticks together. And again, this is an area where having smart guides turned on can be helpful. Hold down alter option, just drag out a copy, hold down alter option. I'm also holding down shift by the way to make sure they're constrained to that perfect line. But boom, we drag out the first four. I'm gonna select all four of these, hold down alter option and the shift key and just create another grouping of them. And the same thing there. All right, cool. So we have like our first row, if you will. Up, oh, not quite. We still need to add one more to the end. We want to make sure we have more than an entire extra uh, bit of artwork because we're going to stagger this here in a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to nudge this over, kind of something like that. That should work. It'll be very close if it doesn't. All right, let's go ahead and nudge this into place. And let's select all of this. Let's just nudge it back this way a little bit. There we go, cool. And you can just, you know, as you create more of these, you can just click and duplicate this one, nudge it into place, and then do the same down here. Drop that into place. And you'll kind of feel them click into place a little bit. There's a lot of like paths and stuff, and stuff going on. So it's gonna be difficult to get an exact feel for where the path should be, but you'll, you'll get it. There we go, click that right into place. And then I'll just select this. I'll nudge, I'll nudge the whole bit downward a little bit just so we make sure we have full coverage. Now, once we have all of our shapes in place, we want to select all of these shapes and we want to group these together, object group. And we'll just create a simple mask just to constrain these to our artboard. So go ahead and grab your rectangle tool. Just click anywhere. And we know that our artboard was 2560 by 1440. Remember way back when we began this whole thing. Hit OK. And we're going to change our fill here to solid white. So up here in the color panel, we can hit the little white swatch. Ba boom, fill it with white. And with our selection tool, select that. And now we're just gonna align the horizontal and vertical centers. And then we're gonna cut this shape to our clipboard. Edit, cut. We will select this entire group right down here. See this group, it comprises all these polygons. Double click to add the mask. And then go edit, paste in front. And then go back to our regular editing mode. And we've created the pattern. And that's really it. We can zoom in here and check it out. And you can see all the details there. Oh, you can see that we didn't quite line that up correctly there. We could go back in and tweak and adjust that a little bit. Uh, but you can see we have this really cool pattern uh, with just a little bit of tweaking here. We can really perfect it and clean things up. But really, in a relatively short period of time, we create a, a pretty intricate looking, very detailed pattern. And it even has like that grain texture for just a little bit of added realism that's really going to help set the design. Just, just push it. Boom, right up over the top, just like that. So for creating this intricate faux 3D hexagon, polygon, you name it, a gon style pattern in Adobe Illustrator, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds in tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do. And this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.